Every day we're bombarded with new information and most of it doesn't benefit us in the long term and so we can forget about it. But occasionally we have to remember things by taking notes or capturing that information in some way or another. Even if you're someone who prefers to take physical notes, it benefits everyone to at least consider having a digital note taking system. So here's mine. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Fassel. If you're new here, I'm a junior doctor working in the NHS and I'm also a part-time content creator. In this video, I wanted to share with you my favorite ways of taking digital notes after years of trialing different apps and workflows. Whether you're a student, content creator, someone who likes to store all their ideas digitally, or even someone who just likes to experiment with some of the cool new apps out there, stick around because this video is for you. So let's not waste any more time. I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the video and I'll leave timestamps below for you to just click on and jump around. So when it comes to note taking, I try to focus on the general principles of what I'm trying to achieve. And then I find the fewest amount of apps that can help me to achieve them. So when it comes to quick capture of ideas, I use an app called Drafts. For the majority of my notes where I keep everything neat and organized, I use Notion. And also for my content databases and workflows, I also use Notion. For my messy ideas, for my book notes, and for my creative inspiration, I use something called Roam Research. To note down the things that I need to do, I use an app called Todoist, which nicely links up with Google Calendar. And finally, those who like to do digital handwriting and people who like to convert their physical notes into digital notes, I'm gonna cover that as well. So Drafts is a very simple app. I have it on my MacBook and also my iPhone. Essentially, the whole point is to jot down your idea as quickly as possible. There's no real structure or anything more than that. It's more the sort of first point of contact for you to write down your information. So when you open the app, it goes straight into a new draft and you start typing and it gets saved along with all the other drafts. So there's only a couple of situations where I really use this app, mainly when I'm reading or listening to an audiobook, because when you hear or read something which really sparks a new idea and you wanna capture it down as quickly as possible, opening up a new page in Notion or any other app takes several clicks and by the time you get to the page where you need to put in that information, you've forgotten what you need to say, so it sort of defeats the purpose. Say for example, I'm driving, I'm listening to an audiobook, and I wanna take a note of what's just been said just before you know it kind of escapes my mind. So I might say something like to my phone, hey Siri, make a new note in drafts. What do you want it to say? Remember to like the video. Okay, drafts created a note. There you go, see, you heard him. So basically just like that, it makes things so much easier to capture the note rather than pulling over and actually typing it up or having to remember it in your head until you arrive at your destination. The other time that I really use this is, say for example, if I'm trying to go to sleep and my Kindle is by my bedside, I'm reading, but my phone is far away. If I come across an idea which I really like, I'll shout across the room, hey Siri, you know, chill, chill, chill. I'm not sure about that. Okay, 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 calm down. I'll say, you know, hey, and then I'll say, make a new note in drafts, and then I'll basically say what I wanted to say, literally from lying down in my bed with my phone far away. Then the next day or whenever I open up drafts next, I'll put them in a more long-term solution, which brings me onto my next app, Notion. So you may have heard of this app already. It's quite the craze amongst the productivity YouTubers, you know, that sort of space. In essence, it's an app that you can use to make notes, databases, to-do lists, almost anything really and a lot of people are starting to use this app as their sort of central hub to monitor their life and with good reason. It's easy to use, it looks nice, it's practically free for most users and also it works for some pretty complex use cases and the best thing is they're only getting better. I used to use an app called Evernote as my sort of main go-to. This was before Notion was even really a big thing but Evernote became quite boring and I didn't really like the user experience so much so I was kind of looking for alternatives. And the main thing that brought me to Notion was that no other app that I had really streamlined my creative workflows. So in essence, I looked into Notion for two main reasons, because number one, it offered databases, and number two, it offered Kanban boards. So databases, I mean something like where you can store an entire list of your blog posts, your videos, and you can filter them how you want. Each one sort of links to, you know, an individual page, and it just does that really nicely. And Kanban boards are basically where you track the progress of your project from beginning to end. So, you know, you could say stage one is where you've just prepared your script, 
and then stage two is when you start editing, stage three is blah, 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 and you start moving your projects from, you know, stage to stage. And so it gives you a really nice sort of visual element to your project planning. So that's my main use for it currently. I'm no longer a medical student, but if I was, I'd probably be putting all my revision notes in here as well, just because it's really powerful, really functional, and it just looks really nice. But as it stands, I've got a database of all my blog posts, my videos, my online courses, etc. And I've got templates for each of them so that each time I add a new entry, the template makes it much easier for me to just start writing. But yeah, that's my favorite use of the app right now. And if you want a more detailed look into how I use Notion, then let me know in the comments below. So Rome Research is a very new web app which essentially re-envisions how we take notes, store them and connect them. The whole idea is that it sort of mimics how our brain works with information and how we link different random pieces of information together as opposed to creating this sort of hierarchy structure of folders that we have in our traditional note taking apps. And so all you really do in this app is number one, you create singular pages which sort of float around. You don't put them anywhere, you just create a new page and it sort of just hovers around in space, okay? And then when you've got two pages which are similar in some way or you want to link them by some common theme, you create a hyperlink that connects page one to page two and also page two back to page one. So it's sort of like a bi-directional link, they call it. And so if you think about it, the bi-directional link is sort of like a portal that connects both of these singular pages. And on its own, it's not too powerful, but when you've got hundreds and hundreds or thousands of these pages, and they've all got these like thin threads that connect them and you know interweave them, you start to get this sort of like neural-like infrastructure that looks a lot like a brain. So it might be easier if I give you an example of how I use it. So I take a lot of book notes here in Rome Research. So if I make a page for a specific book and all the notes are in that one singular page, then what I can do is label all the quotes about creativity, for example, by using the hashtag creativity at the end of that bullet point. I can also create a hyperlink within that page to another page and that is where we start to see the bi-directional linking take place. So if you're ever on a singular page, not only do you get the information on that page, but you can also see the links to every other page that has been made to it. So that might show me books and ideas that I've forgotten about and that just gives me inspiration that I probably wouldn't have had if I was just left with the information on that individual page. And where this really works for me is that if I'm researching for a blog post or a video and I'm looking for sort of inspiration, I'm looking for sort of notes that I've taken in the past, I can just start typing on any specific page and then I can see all the other links and just start going down this sort of rabbit hole of ideas that inspire me to come up with better ideas. Moving on to the next one. So Todoist is a to-do app, super easy to just open up, jot down a new task and just be done with it. So there's two main things that I like about Todoist. Number one is that it's got this kind of cool data entry recognition so that if I enter something like fight John at 4 p.m. on Tuesday, it's gonna recognize Fight John as the event and then automatically put in the time and date so I don't have to. By the way, John didn't do anything, but he had it coming. And the second thing I love about this app is that if I add a time and date with a to-do, then it automatically appears boop, on my Google Calendar. You can label tasks and you can also connect with Gmail so that each time you have a new event kind of being detected in your Gmail, it can automatically pull that into the to-do app and then maybe from there, you can also just directly throw it into your calendar. However, even though you can use it for those functions, I only use it for those main two that I mentioned. And last but not least, for those who love handwriting and want to convert that experience into the digital world, then I use the Wacom tablet if I were to ever do something like that. A Wacom tablet is a drawing tablet which connects via USB and Bluetooth. The pen doesn't need to be recharged because it uses some magnet technology and it has loads of different like pen pressure sensitivities, sort of very similar to the Apple Pen on an iPad. I personally only use this for illustrations really because I don't have an iPad, but I do know a lot of people who use this to take digital handwriting notes or to like annotate a PDF or something like that instead of having to buy a separate iPad. And my first ever video was actually on this device and it got pretty good attention. So I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. So if you like to write a lot or have a lot of 
paper documents and you want to convert all that information over into the digital world, then you might want to look into Evernote. If there's one thing that really sticks out about Evernote is that they have OCR technology, which basically stands for optical character recognition, which means that if you take a picture of a paper document, it can detect all the words within that and convert it into a digital format. And not only that, but it can also detect handwriting just the same way as it would detect written text. And so what that means is if you've taken a picture of your handwritten notes and you upload it into your Evernote sort of database, then when you search in that database, it can actually crawl through those images and find search results within the image of your handwritten text, which is amazing. And even though Notion is amazing, it still doesn't offer this technology or this functionality. And a lot of people have been pestering them to get on it, but I don't know if he'll be coming to it anytime soon. However, if you don't really care about transferring over your handwritten notes into digital format, but you just wanna sort of take notes from a physical textbook, then you might wanna look into Readwise, which is an app that has an OCR reader, and you just sort of hover it over your piece of paper, and then it can detect all the words, and you can sort of highlight those words and extract them into a digital format and then do what you want with them after that. And that's about it. That was a whistle stop tour of all the apps I'm currently using to make digital notes. I hope you've learned something new or have taken inspiration from something I've said. And if you want more detailed insights into any one of those apps or workflows, then please let me know by commenting down below so that I can see what you're actually interested in. And if you'd like more videos like these, then please like the video, subscribe and turn on the notification bells for the next one. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my weekly newsletter, Life Lemons, where I write weekly articles on self-development and personal growth. I'm going to leave some other videos for you to check out which you might like here and here but otherwise do what matters and I'll see you next time.